Hey everybody, uh, just wanted to do a quick video. Um, last week was K-Bar's 115th anniversary. And so they were sending out presents to a bunch of folks. And um, Google+, Plus, Twitter, Facebook, and all that. And I was fortunate enough to get the 2013 Swabby off of the Zombie Killer series, one of their big knives out of the Zombie Killer series from Google Plus, uh, from their Google Plus uh, uh, profile there. So I was really excited about that. That came in last week, so I thought I'd uh, give everybody a quick show of it since I've not seen anything out on YouTube yet for it. Um, as you can see, it's uh, a good solid 22 inch, uh, 22 inch sheath on this which you would in in this actually the tie down strap down here these holes actually come down below my knee and I'm a tall guy I'm six foot and uh, these actually come down below my knee but the belt loop is so wide here that it keeps it as steady as you ever want it to be I mean I was bending around and, and moving and doing some walking and things like this and had this and never had a problem with it. It was really, really nice. Um, like their, uh, this is, unlike their, like I got, this is the K-Bar Kukri here. It's not the Combat Kukri. This is the one they've had out for a couple of years. Uh, but if you notice, I mean, it's it's uh, it's almost a dangler set up here. It's uh, hinged so that the belt and the thigh portion can move independently of each other. Um, now they don't have that hinge set up here, but if you don't tie this down, you don't have a problem with that at all. It really does stay nice. I, I really like that. Uh, it works really, really well for me. Um, now the uh, first thing is you start to take this out, you notice that uh, there's two retaining straps on this. Uh, they're, they're webbing, but they've got they've got Velcro hook and loop on both on the, on the outside. To hold these open so that you can get the knife clear and more importantly put it back in without having to fuss with these things in your way. Uh, now I saw a company uh, Hedgehog Leatherworks does this down in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. They make really fine leather um, sheaths for knives and they have um, shock cord woven inside of their strap that's biased to open so that when you pop it, it automatically springs it open and keeps it there, and then you have to you have to intentionally bring the strap over and then snap it shut. And that's a really nice design. And I like this, this is really nice too. It just say, keeps it open and out of the way. And you'll see why, because you don't want to have to fuss with those things, because this freaking thing is an absolute monster. Look at this. This is a piece of serious iron. <laughs> It is uh, it is 18 inches long, uh, stem to stern, if you will. It's got a 12 inch blade, and here as you can see from uh, from the edge of the scale on up to the tip. So you've got like you know just a, a shade over six inch handle on this. And the handle, uh, buddy and I were talking about this earlier today. Uh, he was like, boy, I don't know, that's a that handle might be too long. And I said, yeah, well, but if you look at it, it's just it's giving you more options here. Um, it gives you two fingers up front if you want, so that you can come up close. If you like this sort of a, uh, of a grip where you can have a little more index finger control down here, and then of course you entire, almost my entire four fingers will fit down there. I'm a little bit, probably a bit bigger of a handed guy than most maybe. So it, it's a little cramped here for one finger to go all the way down. And, uh, but it feels great in the hand. You know, it really does. It feels really good. And especially for such a heavy blade. It is, uh, the site has it as 1.6 pounds, which is a pretty heavy blade when everything's way out here in the front like that. Um, and it's made of quarter inch uh, 1095 Crovan, which is pretty much what uh, K-Bar uses for most of their stuff. And so it's high carbon steel. And it's got this, um, this uh, powder coating on it which I also have uh, actually on the, uh, the Kukri here. And uh, as you can see, it's all chopped up, but uh, I am seriously considering just taping this off 
right here and then stripping this whole thing down uh, getting all this powder coating off because um, you know I understand the whole point about the powder coating now um, you know it it's a, it's helps keep the stains off the rust off and uh, well yeah I, I get it I just I prefer not to have it because it it I mean as you can hear it's a it's a friction it's another friction coating and I just don't want any friction in my cut I can take care of my blade I can keep it from getting rusted up so I'll, I'll take care of my blade and, and see about stripping all this off that might be an interesting find though I hate to I hate to lose the zombie killer and the in the subdued flag so I might tape that off it might look a little goofy but I don't know we'll have to see I'll try it on that kukri first um, before I try it on this one and see how it goes um, so then, oh, and it's a, uh, it's full, it's a, uh, just shy of a full grind, but, uh, I guess you'd call this a full grind, uh, saber grind, of course, being about halfway up or so, uh, before it goes out, but this is coming almost all the way from the edge and going just gently down. And then, uh, you can see the, uh, the actual, uh, line there, the sharpen it. It comes really sharp. My wife was, uh, well, does it come sharp? And I grabbed a sheet of paper and I was like, yeah it comes sharp and uh it's not machete sharp i mean it's like an actual knife sharp so you do need to be careful with that i was out uh doing some trimming with it as i want to do with with a big knife while i'm out walking around my place um because if i'm because if you're swinging a uh, if you're swinging a kukri on the back of a of a riding lawnmower that gets a little twitchy as to where the end of that blade lands if it's going to land come back and land on your head or if it's going to land inside a tree and get it stuck so um i think i'm going to stick with my son really likes the uh, toxic green scales they do come with these out here so if you're looking for a little more subdued look out of that or even a mixed look they do come with the black scales and uh and you know, I was, I, was, I was hearing some folks talk about this one, another company from another one of their knives. They sent you a second scales, so but they didn't send you a second set of screws, which, I mean, yeah, I can understand that. Why would you need a second set of screws when you can only hold one pair of scales on at a time? But still, I mean, that's a nice touch, you know. A lot of companies are not doing that. Uh, K-Bar is doing that on this, on this line, at least. Um, and then they do also send out some... Uh, some toxic green line same line as this um, it's not it's not shock cord and it's not paracord uh, it looks like it's a uh, standard shoelace end here so maybe some nice toxic green shoelacing that they put in there and put in here and this uh, pouch on the outside man this is nice actually I was kind of surprised well one it's really deep and that that didn't surprise me it's about a foot deep and uh, that's that's a nice addition but if you look on the inside, it's actually lined with, um, well, this outside, the sheath here is made out of nylon, of course. And I've got some 600 denier stuff that I picked up from LA Police Gear, one of their one of their three-day packs, or salt packs. And uh, it's 600, and this feels a lot, a lot more pliable than that. A little thinner so maybe this is 400 or 300 that's a complete and total ballpark guess I don't know but it is I mean it is that as the is the higher up you get in the denier ratings as far as that goes you know you're gonna get it's gonna get more and more difficult to actually move the material but this moves quite easy you know it's it's really nice it's pliable it moves and gives but it's lined with this with a thinner nylon fabric in there and that really dresses this whole thing out inside there. As I reached inside there, I was really surprised. That's that's a really nice touch. I really like that. Uh, it's a good detail in that. Uh, and, it's, and a functional use of it, too. It's good to have that lined like that. Um, and another thing in here, hidden inside this pocket. And this is what I was trying to figure out this whole time. Um, it said that it came with this um, Acheron, I think. It's just a little skeletonized blade. Much the same way the old cookeries, like uh, like this real cheap piece of pig iron that I got from uh, from Amazon. I'll get that in there. You know, it comes with the traditional two blades 
that the Kukuris come with, one a sharpener and one um, a small knife for, you know, um, more delicate tasks or more detailed tasks, you know, skinning and whatnot. So it comes with two of those. And so this, so does this. It comes with this skeletonized knife. I think this retails for about uh, $13, 12 something like that on their website. And it's uh, this one's Taiwan. This one is made in the U.S. Uh, this is made up in Olean, New York, is where their headquarters is. Uh, which kind of shocks me because you would have thought that in New York State, they'd have pretty much banned everything except a mild T to carry. So... I don't know, K-Bars, I don't know how they're doing. I know Magpul's having some problems in Colorado, and so they are now moving all of their stuff out, and they've stopped, I believe this is the case, that they have stopped selling to law enforcement agencies um, until they can get a signed document from the law enforcement agent um, that they're promising that the, uh, the law enforcement agent would... Um, uphold the Second Amendment rights of the U.S. citizens. So that is, uh, you can take a look at that on Magpul's site and um, under the uh, the propaganda section, they'll have something in there around the 1st of April, I think. They talked about that. But in New York, I just, I'm just kind of sick to death of hearing, though it's mostly New York City, um, because the mayors there are, are notoriously ridiculous. And the next one's not only can't you eat you can't he's he's saying what you can eat now what you can drink now oh that coke is too big you're too stupid and i need to take control of your diet for you because you're a grown-up but you don't know how to handle yourself so i have to take over and tell you what you can and can't drink because i'm the mayor of new york so whatever so he's pretty committed to disarming the entire populace in New York City, except for the criminals, which is good. That's great, because the New York cops are doing a great job keeping everybody safe with all the dead hookers lining the street. I jest in some way. That's true. I'm just, I'm just kind of disgusted with it. I'm sure the New York City uh, police officers do a fine job up there. They are unfortunately hamstrung by poor city government, and so are the citizens, and that's pretty disgusting. Uh, here in... Minnesota, where I'm at now, uh, there are no limits to the size of a knife that you can carry open or concealed, which is really nice. I really appreciate Minnesota's um, stand on that. Then again, in Minnesota, I mean, one of the few places that you can actually walk out into the wilderness and you've taken a step down off of the, uh, the top of the food chain. You are now no longer the only one at the top of the food chain. So it's a little more necessary this farther north and this much more remote areas like this so anyway ranting aside uh here is the in the sheath it just sits right down in here and this is plastic there's a plastic sheath inside of this nylon and as well for the swabby as well that also sits in there so uh and that's really nice and then a little what, what, maybe a three by three or two and a half by two and a half uh, Velcro patch out here, which they also sent, I do not have it though. They also sent a nice little zombie killer patch, which is kind of cool. I like that. That's a nice touch. You know, little details, you know, the, the pouch liner, the uh, skeletonized auxiliary knife with that. That's a nice little touch. Uh, you know, the outside Velcro on the tabs to keep that open. That's nice. Um, on the back side, they also have three patches here for um, PALS webbing. And here's, uh, there's two one inch here, three here, and three here. And these are probably about two and a half by three uh, inches square here. And this one's maybe, you know, three by two or something like that. So it's a little smaller because it only has the two straps across here. So you've got PALS webbing that allows uh, a vertical placement but then these larger patches will allow horizontal placement. So these are running 90 degrees against each other. So you have a lot of options as to where you, how you want to mount this. If you're going to mount this on the side of a pack would be a great place for something like this. Uh, maybe a seven by, uh, you know, a nice seven by um, fast, fast clip would hold this right in there. Uh, that would probably make Probably just about make that spread right there. So that'd be good. You can mount that on the side of a pack. It'd be good if you wanted to take that too. Um, 
Now, a couple of just a quick thoughts on the blade. The blade cuts really well, but you have to understand that this is different than um, this is different than their um, than their kukri. The ch it, it's a a scimitar, which is what this really is. Technically, it's a scimitar. This is not a chopping blade. It's it's a slicing blade. This is, you know, when you get this curved look like this, you start thinking cavalry, you start thinking mounted, you start thinking movement oriented stuff, because this gives you some the geometry of a of a curved blade on horseback gives you a better slicing and cutting ability on a target than a straight blade would. And so you're, you're thinking of this as more of a slicing and puncturing blade versus the kukri, which is more aggressively um, shaped the opposite direction. And so it, it's more of a biting, a cutting, or a chopping instrument. So this is, f is far better for you know larger two-inch saplings, things like that, two-inch limbs, things like that. This is much better for uh, slicing things. You know, <clears throat> all kidding aside, you know, everybody, you know, it's with with uh, K bar. It's kind of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know, they're having a little fun with the whole zombie thing. Um, as was the CDC. The CDC has a get prepared for the zombie apocalypse um, out on their website. Um, I don't recall the uh, the address off the hand. It's just you know you'd find it. Uh, quick Google and you'll find it. It doesn't take much Google juice to get that to come up. Um, but, you know, they're having a lot of fun with that. But, you know, you can call it what you want. This is still a beast of a blade. And it's still well made. You know, this is a, like I said, a quarter inch high carbon steel, full grind on it. It's heavy. It's durable. It's uh, the beak. I uh, heard one of the K-Bar guys talking about the beak and things. And, and um, I think what what he really kind of missed the beak you're going to be swinging this thing pretty pretty hard and pretty heavy the beak is just a great safety mechanism if this thing slips you still have a hold of that by a great degree you know that's not going to slip out of your hand unless something major is happening to your uh, to your dynamics and the in the way that it's hitting so that's uh I mean, just think about it. A big, heavy blade, you're going to want something big and heavy at the bottom, wide at the bottom, to catch your hand in case it slips. Wet, gore, whatever, you know, it's going to catch down there. Um, you know, a lot of folks, they have a lot of fun with, with uh, big blades like this. I do with my kukri, too, but the kukri, I've actually taken out and helped a friend slaughter goats with it, which, if you read some of the history behind the kukri and the Gurkhas, that was how they came up with that, was the, uh, the commander general, the Gurkhas, happened to be wandering by a, uh, a farmstead, and the guy was butchering a goat, and he had a curved blade like this, like the Kukri's, and took a goat's head off in just one swing, and the commander was so impressed, he went and talked to the farmer and was able to mimic the same geometry and started using that with his soldiers. Now, whether that's just a uh, myth, turned legend or truth blown out of, um, you know, blown out of uh, what's actually happened or not is, you know, I don't really know. But that's the, uh, that's the word on the street on that. And, you know, I mean, the kukri, uh, and I think like this one, I'm going to try as well. We use the same, for the same sort of thing. Um, the kukri, what we actually did was when we had the goat all skinned out, gutted and uh, we wanted to split out the rib cage well, we just had it hanging up and we just took the kukri and just went right down the one of the sides of the spine and just went through like four or five ribs at one time just right down next to the spine and it did a great job at that just you know just cutting right through that and getting rid of you know splitting that animal out um, same thing for this I think this would be good for something like that sometimes when you're when you're butchering it, it seemed to me a lot of times that um, it's good to have um, something that'll reach all the way through 
um, especially when you're taking off like front, uh, you know, you're taking the front legs off for goats and deer, you know, there's no, it's not a ball and socket joint. It's just somehow attached to the side. And sometimes it's good to have a blade that'll sit right up next to the ribs and you can take the entire, uh, the entire limb off with just a few presses and strike and, and, and cuts through it, you know, rather than having to saw at it and nick at it and, and everything. And one, you know, one long, easy slice and it just comes right off. So, so it's good to have a blade for that. But this is why I want to get also one of the, what I, why I would want to get rid of this coating too. You know, I wouldn't want it to keep, uh, this would be hard to clean uh, as far as food safety goes. And I really don't know what this coating is like for food safety, if it, if it is safe for food. So it would be good to get those go, get that stuff off of there um, so that that's not getting into the food. So, well, that is it, guys. Um, you know, again, real quickly, I love the blade. It's thick. It's heavy. Um, 18 inches long, 12-inch blade to the scale here. <laughs> Uh, it's about a little over a six inch handle, a uh, quarter inch, 1095 Crovan. Um, it's got, uh, of course, with the beak and a pronounced hilt area here. Comes with the uh, Acheron, if that's pronounced correctly, a little skeletonized blade, extra scales, and screw set with that. Uh, it comes with this uh, pouch on the side. Of course, it comes with little extra cordage for you. Uh, the sheath in here for that Acheron to go in here. Uh, fully plastic sheath, full plastic sheath for the swab. Uh, Velcro backed tie downs, snap downs for that. Back side, three different places for PAL stuff. So you can use that with your Molly. Equipment, a broad, a nice broad wide belt loop here to keep it uh, steady on your belt because you're probably not going to be able to tie this to your thigh. It's not going to move with you anyway, so I don't think that's going to end up being a good, uh, even if you could, if you're a huge guy or gal, I don't think tying it to your thigh would be something to be useful for you anyway. So, you know, that being done. Other than that, that's great. So, appreciate K-Bar for sending this out. Happy birthday to you. And if you have any questions, just leave them below at the comments, and I'll uh, try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.